This example I have taken from the book of Statics and Dynamics by Beer and Johnson. And in this problem, there are three forces acting at one point. These are two external forces, 780 Newton, 500 Newton, and one tension in this cable BC, which is given 725 Newton. We will try to determine resultant of these three forces using resolution of forces method. For that, first we have to draw x and y axis, which I have drawn here, x axis and y axis, which is passing through the point through which all the other forces are passing. Now, these two forces are already shown, so draw the third force, 725 Newton, which is given here, 725 Newton. Now, you can see that here, angle of any force is not given directly. Instead, they have drawn uh, these triangles. Using these triangles, here two triangles and one triangle is this. Using these right angle triangles, you can determine angles here, this angle or this angle or this angle you can determine. But without determining angle, you can solve this problem. How to solve this problem? You have to resolve all these forces along x-axis and y-axis. Now you know that if all the forces which are acting towards right side of y-axis, this is y-axis, if any force is acting right side of y-axis, that means if force is in first quadrant or in fourth quadrant, in that condition, x component of that force will be positive like this. I have resolved the 780 Newton, which is towards this direction, so positive x direction. Similarly, uh, its y component, y component will be in negative direction. Any force which is acting below x line, x axis. So, if any force is acting below x axis, that means the 780 Newton and 500 Newton, these two are acting below x axis, therefore y component of these two forces will be negative. If any force is above x axis, that means in first quadrant or second quadrant, then its y component will be positive. This y component of 780 Newton is negative here and this is y component of 780 Newton. Similarly, you can resolve 500 Newton into x component. So its x component should be negative because it is left side of the y axis. So any force which is at left side of the y axis, its x component will be negative. Uh, its y component will also be negative. Y component is also negative. Similarly, you can resolve this 725 Newton into two components. So this is x component of 725 Newton and here you will get y component of 725 Newton. To determine all these components, you don't require this theta to be calculated. Directly you can get components of these forces. So how? So you can write this sigma fx is equal to here first component 780, it's this component, horizontal component. To get this horizontal component, we require 780 into cos of this angle. Now you can see that this angle and this angle are same. This is interior alternate angle. From this, you can see that these two angles are same. So this, in this triangle, this angle, cos of this angle can be obtained. So what, what will be the cos of this angle? We know that adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So cos theta or cos of this angle is equal to adjacent is 12 divided by hypotenuse is 13. So 12 by 13. Now this force, this component is negative. This component is negative, component of 500 Newton. Here again, you can see that this angle and this angle, here small angle, angle between 3 and 5, angle between 3 and 5 and this angle are same. So to get this component, you require cos of this force. So cos theta can be obtained, again adjacent divided by hypotenuse. So adjacent is 3, hypotenuse is 5 and this direction is negative. So minus 500 in place of cos theta, I am writing 3 divided by 5, 3 divided by 5. Similarly, for third force, 725 Newton, this is my x component, again it is in negative direction, so I have taken minus 725, now we require this cos of this angle, so now this angle can be obtained from this right angle triangle, from this right angle triangle you can see that in this right angle triangle, if you take this angle then this will be adjacent and this will be hypotenuse, so adjacent is 840 and hypotenuse is 1160, so 840 divided by 1160, in this way uh, without calculating this theta, you are directly writing these cos values. These are cos uh, of this angle, this one is cos of this angle, and this term is cos of this angle. When you solve this, you will get this value minus 105. Similarly, you can calculate uh, y components of all these three forces. So y components are 
this is 780 Newton its y component is negative so I have written minus 780 now we require sine theta so how can you get sine theta so if this is angle uh, theta then you can see that this is opposite and this is hypotenuse so sine theta is opposite divided by hypotenuse that means 5 by 13 so 780 into 5 by 13 similarly this component 500 Newton component in y, y direction is negative so I have taken minus this is 500 Newton so 500 again you require sine of this angle so sine of this angle if the, uh, this angle and this angle is same angle between 3 and 5 so 4 will be your uh, opposite and uh, 5 will be hypotenuse so opposite divided by uh, hypotenuse that is 4 by 5 so in this way you can get some component of uh, 500 Newton now third one is 725 Newton y component this is positive that's why I have taken this as plus 725 Newton now this angle is theta so this component will be 725 sine theta so you require sine theta so sine theta from this right angle triangle you can calculate sine theta sine theta is this angle is theta so this is opposite 800 divided by this is uh, this is hypotenuse so 800 divided by 1160 in this way you can calculate sigma fy and if you calculate you will get value of minus 200 so minus 200 newton is uh, sum of all the components in y direction and minus 105 is sum of all components in x direction once you get all these uh, all these two values uh, sigma fx and sigma fy we know that magnitude of resultant is equal to r is equal to sum of 105 square plus 200 square if you solve this you will get 226 newton get angle what we have to do we have to take tan inverse of sigma fy upon sigma fx if you take sigma fy upon sigma fx that means you will get this angle theta from x axis so angle of resultant this is angle of resultant from x axis I have taken this mod value which means that you will get tan inverse value always in between 0 to 90 degree so what you have to do is uh, after that after determining angle you have to determine in which quadrant that resultant is acting so uh, I have taken mod value so positive values I have taken and after that when we calculate this we are getting 62 degree angle now this 62 degree angle is the angle of resultant from x axis but it can be in first quadrant or second quadrant or third quadrant or fourth quadrant now that we have to check that we will check from this values of sigma fx and sigma fy now you can see that x sigma fx and sigma fy both are negative therefore resultant will act in third quadrant that means in this quadrant this resultant is acting so for that you have to show you have to draw a small diagram like this uh, which indicates that this resultant R is acting in third in third quadrant with it with its angle 62 degree from x axis so this is x axis from this its angle is 62 degree and this is your resultant in this way you can determine resultant of a concurrent coplanar force system thank you